Welcome back, guys. In this lesson, we are going to create our UI manager to deal with our panels. OK, are you ready? Let's do it. OK, so I'm going to open the scripts folder, right click, create a new C Sharp script that I'm going to call UI manager. Perfect. OK, so now under the main scene, I'm going to create a new game object. So let's create an empty game object. And I don't want it to be a child of the environment game object. Let's rename it, let's say, managers. OK, under this managers game object, I'm going to create a new game object. And let's call it UI manager. So it's just a question of organization, OK? You can basically set or put all of your game objects under this, the main scene and not organize them. But yeah, it's much cleaner like that, especially if you're working in a team or so on, OK? Let's grab the UI Manager script now, drag it, and drop it onto the UI Manager game object. And let's open it. All right, the game manager is now, uh, the UI Manager is now opened. Perfect. So the first thing we want to do is add a reference or some references to our panels. So again, I'm going to add a new header for the panels. Perfect. Serialize field, private, game object, connection panel, connection panel like so. OK, I'm going to duplicate this line twice. OK, so this one is going to be the waiting panel. And this is going to be the game panel. Perfect. So at start, what we want to do is enable the connection panel. So connection panel dot set active true. And it's basically just going to set the uh, let, let me let me select it first. Set the enabled Boolean of the game object to true or false. So true in our case. OK, let's go back there. We want to hide the waiting panel. So let's set it active false. And we also want to hide the game panel. OK. Perfect. So we can actually grab these lines of code and drop them onto a method that we can call, let's say, show connection panel. So let's do that to have a cleaner code. So private void show connection panel, like so. And let's call it from the start method. Awesome. So while we are here, let's also create a method to show the waiting panel and another one to show the game panel. OK, so private void show waiting panel. So I'm going to copy the lines of codes that I'm going to paste the lines of codes that we've copied, but just change some things here. We want to hide the connection panel and show the waiting panel. So I'm going to grab this method and Paste it here. Rename it show game panel. Awesome. So we want to hide the waiting panel and show the game panel. Are you following along? Awesome. Next, what do we want to do? We want to add some callbacks to our host and client buttons, OK? Just to allow the player to connect as a host or a client. So let's do that right away. Under the show game panel method, I'm going to create a new method. And this one should be public. Why? Because if you make it private, the button won't be able to see it. OK, so it needs to be public so that you can attach it to the button, actually. So private void um, host button callback, let's say. Perfect. And let's also add the public void client button and not button. Button callback. Awesome. What do we want to do here? So we can already imagine that we want to show the waiting panel because it should have been connected as a host. And same thing for the client here. But before that, we need to do something, actually. We need to call the network manager and ask him or tell him that we want to connect as a host, OK, or start a server. So let's call the network manager. Oh, we don't know where it is. So to fix that, what you can do is either select the quick fixes right here and add the using Unity Netcode library. But if you want, if you don't want to do that, you can add it yourself. But it's actually faster to use the quick fix. But I'm going to do that this way. 
Okay, no logic in my sayings. Netcode, perfect. So now that we are calling the network manager, we want to access the singleton, so the instance, the single instance of the network manager, and call the start host method. And that's that simple. This is the only line of code you need to connect as a host. And you can already imagine what we are going to do for the client. So network manager dot singleton dot start client. Perfect. And we are done. So we can now already start the game and see two players, actually. So let's give it a try. I'm going to go back to Unity. And I'm just going to select the UI manager first. Add the connection panel, the waiting panel, and the game panel. Okay, perfect. I'm going to hit play to check if this works properly. Okay, let's connect as a host. And it doesn't work. Why? Because we haven't attached the callbacks to the buttons. So let's do that quickly. Okay, we are going to select the host button. And under the onClick event here, we want to add a callback. So let's grab the UI manager and select UI manager host button callback. Perfect. Same thing for the client. Grab the UI manager, UI manager, client button callback. Awesome. Let's now hit play. Okay, perfect. Let's click host. And now we can notice that the player has been created, so we can control it. Oh, by the way, it's going behind the bushes. So we are going to fix that too. And we can already spot that the waiting panel has been displayed. So the connection panel is no longer available. Let's have a look at the canvas. Okay, perfect. This one is disabled. The waiting panel is enabled. And the game panel is disabled also. So that's perfect. Let's now just quickly fix this overlapping issue because we just need to increase the, let's say, player renderer order in layer or decrease the bush order in layer. Look, if we only set it to minus 30, let's say, it's already way better. So this is what we are going to do. Okay, so I'm going to open the environment game object, select my both, both my bushes, and let's set the order in layer to minus 30. Okay, it should be above the mountains. Okay. Awesome. Now, I think that we can already build the game and give it a try. So for that, you are going to select File in the menu, Build Settings, and quickly build your game. Or you can actually select Player Settings and change the company name and the product name if you wish to do so. So let's, yeah, let's edit some stuff here. For the company name, I'm going to set it to Tab Seal. Perfect. Let's call the game Mushy Bounce. Let's open the Resolution and Presentation tab here. We don't want it to be full screen window. We want it to be windowed because we are going to try a lot of times. Let's set it to a default portrait window. So 1020 by 1020 by 1920. And let's also allow, the, allow us to resize the window by ticking this checkbox here. Perfect. Now we can actually build and run the game. So let's create a new folder for our builds. Let's call it builds. Perfect. And let's select it. Now Unity will build the game and run it automatically. All right, so Unity has launched the game right here in a windowed mode so I can resize it. That's perfect. So what I want to do is open the folder where it is. So show in Explorer right here. Okay, let's say... Uh, I think it's before that, builds. And let's launch another instance. So we now have two instances of the game right here. So let's start this instance as a host and this one as a client. Perfect. So here I can spot one issue. I can move the player in the first instance, so the one that was a host, but I can't in the other one. And this one is moving both players. So we need to fix that. That's unacceptable. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, see you in the next lesson to fix this quick issue. Bye-bye.